today we're going to put this flip out DVD receiver into this dash kit. So this here is an old dash kit from my old Chevy. Um, this here is a birthday gift of been waiting to put into my car for some time now because my old one took a crap so this here is the din and a half style this is from the old 80s uh gms if you haven't if you're not really familiar with this kind of stuff but that's what it is you can see the homemade brackets there's even some fiberglass and going on because this this car has seen its chair of stereo upgrades that's for sure so this part we're not going to get involved because i've done so many videos to death about how to wire a car stereo so we're just going to forget that what we're going to focus on is mounting this into this dash kit so if you don't have one of these tools, this here is called a cotter pin extractor. I just call it, it's commonly known in the industry as a hook tool. This allows you to get in there and raise up these locks for the side brackets for the mounting sleeve. Usually it does anyway. Once these things are opened up, you can slide that right back out of there. We don't need this unit here yet. So I'm just going to put that over here to the side. Now this one here, since it's very dark and I don't have the original parts in it, to it any longer, I did notate that this is the top and this is the bottom because I know because it's had this car now for 26 years, so obviously I know how it's supposed to look, but you don't. So in this case, what you're going to do is these little tabs that you've pushed, forced out so that we can slide the deck out, you want to slide those back in and make sure that they're fairly well aligned straight so that way when it locks back into the receiver once it's installed you, sl you slide it back in there and it's supposed to click into these tabs right here and here okay that's really important the top and bottom does not matter because there is no one or the other on this particular unit and in most units i don't think i've ever seen anyone that's you know differ differentiates the top to the bottom side of the sleeve I and mean, if you look at this side you're going to see more of the same on this side so the way it works is once you have your hole cut out, and this is a single DIN receiver, you're going to take your sleeve, slide that in there just like so. And that one there, that's a pretty good fit. No problem there. You can see that there's no gaps, no problems. Even for an old car, as old as this one is, that's pretty damn good. But there are going to be some cases where you're going to have Say if you dremeled out, if you had an old dash and you were cutting it out with a, a metal cutting tool or something like that, it does get, you know, the chance of getting jagged and ugly. So you can always use stuff like this, which are called thin sized trim rings, which you can lay in front. Looks like that. It adds that extra little dimension. And these things come in 1 16th all the way up to 1 and a half inch. So you can go from here all the way up to here, depending on your, your scenario, you know. And this card, of course, doesn't need it like I showed you, but just so you get an illustration, it would kind of wind up looking something like that. Where It's nice. It blends right in there. Um, and even once you put the, the trim ring on there, they actually start to blend together because you got the smooth black ABS plastic on top of the smooth black ABS. It looks nice. So just a thought. If you needed it, you might want to get one of those. But for us, we do not need it, so I'm just going to slide my sleeve in there. I'm going to take my hook tool, and the way it works is these little tabs are bendable. And you can just push them down like so. And what that does is it sandwiches the front end of the sleeve to the back, so that way it cannot move in or out. Sometimes if it's a little, little finicky, you can even pushing these side ones. This kit doesn't really have a provision for it. However, some cars do. You don't have to go crazy, but that's all you need. Just to make sure it's snug, and it's not gonna bounce around in the, while well, it's in the dash and you're driving forward. You don't wanna go hit, you know, hit the gas real hard and the radio come flying out. That wouldn't be cool. So once that's done, then you can take your receiver. My brand new birthday gift. all those wires in there see this car, this one here has got no lack of wires and this is just gonna click right in there these are gonna go click clack see that that's the way it's supposed to look for folks so now when I install this back into the dash I just put my screw in here screw in here and this thing will just rest 
perfectly. If it's a little weird and it kind of goes too heavy in the back, something like that, what you could do is you could use one of these back straps, mount that onto the, the supplied hole on the back of every stereo receiver, if you ever wonder what these are for. That is so you could take a bolt, mount this back strap and get behind there, and you can actually angle it up or down however it needs be to keep it secure from the back or in the front and also keeps it secure from somebody stealing your radio. Now the only last thing to do now is to put on your trim ring for your stereo. Click it in there like so. Just for fun, I powered up the, the unit so you can see what happens when I open it up. Oh, that's nice. Now I get to go home and play with my new toy. And so will you. So that's how you do it, folks.